Welcome back to Spiral Tree, as we're going to watch The Emperor's New Groove today, a movie that helped me become the man that I am today. And we start this movie with the greatest guy in all of the lands, the Emperor, that's been turned into a llama. And his name is K-U-Z-Z-O, Cusco, Cusco, let's go. And of course, then we have a flashback of what brings him into being a llama. And we see a baby, and we see that baby turn into the man, and then that man turns into the emperor. And then we see an awesome musical intro that introduces us to our overlord, Cusco, where we see the groove that we are graced with in this film is ruined by some insignificant elderly man. A man who dared to interrupt the Emperor's groove, such a cardinal sin that he must have been thrown off the mountain. And can we just admire and seek to emulate and want as a goal to have a whole bunch of shirtless, painted men river dancing for us like Cusco does? Isn't that a dream for everyone? Because I know it's my dream. And then we see Pancha, who is just a genuine nice guy. And we want to care about him, but we don't. Because you know what we're all here for, baby. Kronk. Kronk is the best boy. I don't see any of the other people getting a sequel. I don't see Yzma's new groove or Poncha's new groove. The sequel is called Kronk's new groove because we only care about Kronk. And the best part about reviewing this movie is the fact that we get to review the next movie, which is amazing. Then we see Cusco actually make a smart move and fire Yzma, but then proceeds to do a bad move by bringing in the village elder just to tell him that he's going to turn his house into a dope summer pool home because that's the ultimate flex to your villagers and won't cause them to rise up and revolt against you as a leader. No, most definitely won't happen even though most of human history says otherwise and we see immediately that Yzma is plotting to kill Cusco again good move on Cusco for firing Yzma and how do you think that Yzma's gonna do the deed of getting rid of Cusco With poison the poison the poison for Cusco the poison chosen especially to kill Cusco Cusco's poison yes that poison and we see poor sweet Kronk have to do the deed of the poison, but he grabs the wrong vial and turns Cusco into a llama. All I can think of this moment is how good those spinach puffs must be. Man, those actually look phenomenal. I'd eat like 10, 12, 13 of those spinach puffs and then chow down on whatever dessert Kronk has made for me because you know Kronk slams down in that kitchen because all nice boys know how to cook. And even though the label on the poison was slipped and it looked just like the little skull and crossbones, it's somehow Kronk's responsibility to have to take the llama trash out. And he proceeds to throw him down a river that leads to a deadly waterfall. But Kronk is too much of a good boy and has too big of a good heart. And he listened to his shoulder angel and he catches Cusco. But drops him down a flight of stairs and now it's Pontius' problem. And we see Poncha's two lovely kids and his lovely wife with a third one on the way. And his beautiful llama. And his beautiful llama in a sack. And we are reminded that this movie is not about Poncha, but is in fact about Cusco, as Cusco's the only person who matters, besides Kronk, who matters very much in all of our hearts. And then we see Cusco discover that he's a llama and goes off into the woods to try to take himself home. And Poncha knows that Cusco, if he goes on his own, will kill himself. And he can't let that happen, so he follows along and Cusco immediately angers a squirrel who gets him to wake up a pack of black jaguars that proceed to back him in a corner and is only saved by Pancha imitating George of the Jungle, which then proceeds them to be floating down a river that tracks down to a waterfall with a lot of deadly rocks at the bottom of it. As Pancha stands his ground against Emperor Cusco and doesn't let a bully bring him down, Cusco ends up showing a tiny bit of kindness, even though Cusco's not shown a single ounce of kindness in his entire life. Then we also see Yzma does not hesitate for a second to take over this kingdom and puts her weird old eyelash forward face all over every aspect of the kingdom and then she immediately gets upset as she finds out that Kronk wasn't able to quote unquote 
pull the trigger and kill the llama and that Cusco is alive and now they have to go find Cusco and I'm pretty sure Poncha's kids are psychic because they were able to dream exactly what was happening to their father and that's a little terrifying and Poncha and Cusco get into a little fight because Cusco is selfish and selfish as he can be he plans on going back on a handshake a sacred order of the man code that no man should ever break and yeah of course Cusco breaks it because he's a llama he's not a man and then they fight and in their blind rage, they almost get themselves killed by crocodiles, but save themselves through the power of rope and scorpions and bats and a lot of bats. Then Mother Nature tries to take out Poncha one more time, but good old Lama Cusco, abomination to nature itself, is able to save our humble, humble alpaca farmer. And I think they start their four day walk to the castle at that point. And we see Yzma on the chase for Cusco as we see one of the infinite talents that Kronk has, which is speaking squirrel. And man, oh man, do I think it'd be really cool if I could speak rodent. Because then I could talk to my hamster Hamilton and we would have conversations about things that he likes, like his wheel or various types of nuts, or how much he wants out of his internal prison that he calls home. We know that everyone gets hungry sometimes, so Poncha and Cusco head to the local diner. But who do they meet besides Yzma and Kronk? And Cusco, of course, has to be kind of a Karen about it, and goes to immediately complain to the chef, who quits and gives his entire restaurant to Kronk, who is immediately able to understand how the restaurant game works because Kronk is a man of many, many talents and cooking is one of those talents. And Poncha discovers that Kronk and Yzma are there to kill him and comes up with the most clever way to handle the situation. You want a whole restaurant distracted and annoyed? Have them sing a birthday celebration song because nobody in a restaurant ever wants a birthday celebration song. I mean nobody. And of course, Poncha and Cusco fight again and go their separate ways. And Kronk immediately remembers in the middle of the night, Poncha, who he was, why he's important, the fact that he has Cusco, and where Poncha lives all in one quick moment. And the leaps and bounds that go through Kronk's brain is immaculate. And while that's happening, Cusco realizes what Poncha said at the beginning of the movie is true. And he's all alone by himself and not even the llamas will take him in because why would the llamas want a llama that's not a llama? Because people aren't llamas. Llamas are llamas and you're a people llama and nobody wants you. And at this time, Yzma makes it to Poncho's family and tries to convince them to sell out the emperor, but they don't and they end up kicking them out. But... Watch as you realize that they invite Kronk back because everybody loves Kronk to the point where even though Yzma is trying to ruin the Emperor and her family, they still want Kronk back because he's just that good of a person. And then we see this awesome chase scene with Kronk and Pancha and Emperor Cusco and they use old school visual gags like the maps following them and then they're questioning how the maps flip and then even Mother Nature comes comes in and hates Yzma as they jump over the valley and they get struck by a singular lightning bolt from the only cloud in the area. But it doesn't hurt Kronk because Mother Nature knows Kronk is a good boy. And they even get to the palace first and they, they're like, why? How? How did we do that? Kronk doesn't even understand. Nobody understands. But it's really funny when they point it out. And then we get to this whole convoluted murder scene where Yzma is trying to kill the Emperor and the Emperor is transforming into different animals. But none of that matters because Yzma lost lost from one singular fact in this entire situation is that she insulted Kronk's spinach puffs and you never insult a chef's cooking if you ever want them to do anything for you. I've been in kitchens in the past and you should know that every chef at every single restaurant that you've ever been into in your entire life is completely bat crazy and they will do anything to achieve the perfection that is their food. You think poison is going to be enough to stop a chef? You think a knife will be enough? You think a gunshot wound would be enough? You think anything is enough to stop a chef from completing what the chef wants to do and the chef will do to succeed in their life? And you think that will stop them? No, because every chef in the world is an artist. And I know because I'm also an artist and I'm also a former culinary student who inspired to be a chef. And you think that I will not achieve 
the perfection in my own art and this video crafting that I pride myself in, the comedy that I succeed in, if you think you can stop me, you're wrong. I will be the best that there ever was. I will be the best that there ever is. And if you try to stop me, I will show you crazy. I will show you what it means to be an artist. I will show you perfection. Oh, thank you for watching this Spiral Tree review. If you liked my video today, which I know you did, hit the like button down below. Make sure you're subscribed to see more of this absolute perfection. And comment down below how amazing Kronk is over Cusco. And I will see you next time.